All right, Larry Kruger here from the Pig and a Pickle Kruger Show with a little Golden State Warrior video. The trade deadline's coming up in February. Who stays? Who goes? We'll play a little game coming up next. But first, we are brought to you by Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue in all of Northern California. Check them out in Emeryville and Corte Madera. They're open seven days a week from 11 a.m. till 8 p.m. or until they run out. Pig and a Pickle, go get the brisket, get the brisket chili. Say hi to Damon and Mary. Tell them that Krug sent you. And this video is brought to you by Mojo Fantasy. Check that link in the description. Use the promo code Krug, K-R-U-E-G, and they will match you up to your first $100. Well, it is NBA trade season. The Warriors are currently positioned 12th in the Western Conference, 17 wins, 20 losses. They're in kind of a unique spot. According to printed reports, they're open to trading anybody on the roster. Well, not anybody. They don't want to trade Steph Curry. Anybody else, though, could be gone. And that is a totally new position for Joe Lacob and Mike Dunleavy. Um, and there's, you know, the NBA trade deadline is approaching. And, and you know, what are the Warriors going to actually do? Who are they going to move? Who stays? Who goes? Who are they looking at? Um, I think it's pretty clear that they want Pascal Siakam um, of Toronto. And Siakam's a free agent at the end of the year. So that kind of makes things a little bit more complicated. Um, he's a really good player, though. And he's still a really good player. He's got great length. Very athletic. Um, you know, he's he's an all-star. Unrestricted free agent, as I said, this summer. And his, his game has been good all year. He's been impressive. He's averaging 22.2 points a game, 6.4 rebounds a game, 5.0 assists per game. Um, he's shooting 52.5% from the floor. So he is coveted and there's a bunch of teams. The Kings would love to have him. A bunch of teams would love to have him. And Mike Dunleavy is, and, and the Warriors are at the top of that list. In fact, Dunleavy has been spotted with Masai Yajiri, um, in the tunnel, you know, when the Warriors played the Raptors and they, a lot of people saw them in a very serious conversation. And that's led to a lot of speculation that a deal is, is potentially in the works. Um, and, you know, according to the rumor mill um, that, that not only have they discussed the trade, that there may be some momentum building towards a Siakam to the warrior trade. Now I don't love what I'm hearing as far as the price tag. Cause I don't want to, I don't want to see the warriors move on from Jonathan Kuminga, but it sounds like, you know, that's, that's part of it. You know, that, that maybe the, maybe the, the Raptors really want Kuminga and um, that I don't know that I would want to move Kuminga at this point. You know, that's, that's, that's the question I would have. It's like, um, why would you want to move Jonathan Kuminga when he's just coming into his own, but you may have to, you may have to give to take. Um, and, you know, as far as the warrior situation, let's, let's talk a little bit about what it is because they're not playing well. They're an older team. They're trying to do what? maybe win one more title around Steph Curry, or at least give him a chance at that. Um, the way they've played recently makes you think that their mix is not right. Wiggins, you know, and then several of their players, their trade value is not what it was. Um, so does anybody want Wiggins? You know, there's three years and $84.5 million left on Andrew Wiggins' deal. Um, does anybody want to take on that commitment for the way Wiggins is playing right now? Do you want, I mean, Clay Thompson's interesting because he makes $43 million and his deal is expiring. So, but do the Warriors want to go cross that bridge? Is Draymond Green on the block? You know, based as he now in a different category after uh, his head slap on Nurkic and how long he's been away, or is he going to be here? So um, I don't think the Warriors want to trade Jonathan Kuminga unless they get a star player back in return. So let's talk a little bit about what Golden State needs. What they really need is they need more athleticism and more size. And Steph just is running out of gas. And it's just like he's got to do it all. Um, and Clay Thompson's numbers have declined significantly from last year. And so you kind of wonder where, you know, what's the future? Where are they going? Is their window closing? I mean, the game against the Pelicans the other night was like a slap in the face. Like it's time to come to grips with, where they're at, which is, you know, they're 42.6 million over the luxury tax. 
So that means they're in the in the second apron. They can only take back up to 110 percent of outgoing salary. So they, you know, if they can clear some of their money from the from their books at the deadline, um, you know, then maybe they dip below the second apron and regain the their ability to have that mid level exception this summer in free agency, and they could play with that. We'll see. Um, Jonathan Kuminga, he's got one year and seven point six million left on his deal after the season. I wouldn't want to trade him. I would say if you say we're going, we're going to play a game right now. Who stays? Who goes? In my world, Jonathan Kuminga stays. I want to see Kuminga here. Uh, Brandon Pajemski, has got three years and $12.9 million remaining on his deal with a team option on the last two years, 19th pick in this year's draft. He's been really, really good. He rebounds. He plays hard. He knows how to play. Um, I would say he stays. He stays. Then there's Wiggins. He's got three years, as I said, $84.5 million. He's got a player option on the last year. Uh, he's regressed. He just looks like he's coasting. Um, there's no doubt. This is number one, you know, job of Mike Dunleavy is trade this guy. So who, who, you know, where can you move Wiggins to? He makes 24 million a year. Would you take Davion Mitchell and Harrison Barnes and a pick from Sacramento? I might do that. Uh, I like Davion Mitchell. He plays really, really good on the ball defense. He's tough. I think if the Warriors are going to win anything, they're going to have to get some guys who are really, really tough. Davion Mitchell's really, really tough. I don't know if Barnes and Green can ever really coexist. So maybe you got to reroute Barnes somewhere else if you made that deal. All right, let's go to the next guy, Moses Moody. He's got one year and $5.8 million left on his deal. Um, and when he plays, he plays well, and then he doesn't play. And then he maybe has a bad game, and then he doesn't play, and then he plays a little bit, and then he plays pretty well. And it's like he, there's no momentum going for Moody. So even though I really like Moses Moody and I would not be in a rush to trade him, I absolutely would. Um, if, if, if I could get some team interested because of Moses Moody and his relative youth, he's got one year, re very reasonable 5.8 million left on his deal. Um, all you got to do is look at the, the good games he's had and say, look, he could be that if we played him every night. Um, he hasn't been able to get minutes on golden state. So Moody, I'd say goes. All right, Chris Paul. Chris Paul's an expiring $30 million. He's got one year, $30 million non guaranteed uh, money remaining. And, you know, we all know what Chris Paul is. He's a, he's a winner. He's a good ball handler and he's a leader. And if you're trying to win a title, he could help you off the bench. Um, and this is also an opportunity to pivot and get a younger player or maybe a couple younger players by moving Chris Paul. So, this is going to be the Warriors are going to have to find a team that is willing to, that wants to turn the page on their cap and has a couple young, intriguing players that up to add up to roughly 30 million. Um, I say he goes, I think he's gone. Clay Thompson expiring deal at 43.2 million. Um, Clay Thompson is, is what was one of my favorite players uh, coming up, but, I, I just think that one of the Warriors' primary problems right now is that Clay Thompson is having a hard time. He's such a force, even though he's such an easygoing guy. Um, he's a force in that room because of who he is and what he's meant to the organization. And um, he's not dealing with the twilight of his career well. He badly needs a, a change of scenery. I hate to say it. It's exactly what he needs. Why? Because here he's always going to be Clay Thompson. And right now he can't play to that level. And um, somewhere else, I think it might be easier for him to kind of accept where he's at in his career. I don't think the Warriors, you know, they, they offered him almost $50 million for two years, and he's not happy with that. And he felt disrespected. In reality, that's probably a dramatic overpay for what he's contributing. So that's an impasse. And and he did, his joylessness is as... Um, you know, contagious as the joy that he played with when he came up and you can just feel it. So I think he's got to go. So, you know, right now I'm saying Kuminga stays, Pajemski stays, Wiggins goes, Moody goes, Paul goes, Clay goes, Draymond Green's got three years and $77 million left. And I don't know who wants that deal. Maybe the Lakers, if LeBron insisted upon it, Otherwise, I don't know who really wants Draymond Green. 
I'm not in a real rush to move Draymond Green. I think I would keep him for how well he plays off Steph and how well Steph plays off him. But if there was a young player out there that was intriguing to me and uh, they would take Draymond in return for uh, for that young player and you could get younger in one swoop and you thought that guy had serious upside, I'd consider it. I'd absolutely consider it. Um, Steph's going to have to sign off on that, I would imagine. But I wonder if Steph would, you know, and um, I don't know. I'm not sure. I mean, where does Green go next? I mean, what kind of a role does he play next? Does he go to a contender? To me, it makes sense that he would go to a contender and get him over the top. But um, the Lakers, I think, could make some sense because LeBron, Detroit could make some sense. Uh, Sacramento could make some sense. Um, so I, I would say Draymond, I'd be open to moving him, but um, but I'm also open to keeping him. So I'd say I put him in the 50-50 mold. Kevon Looney, one year left at $8 million. He has not been effective this year, and he's lost a lot of lift. Uh, he's a really... A personal favorite of Kerr. He loves him. He's a personal favorite of a lot of guys, and he's played a lot of really good basketball. I would absolutely move him. If you could move him, I would. Gary Payton, the second, I would keep. He's got a player option of one year, nine point million remaining. He's not healthy right now. So that, you know, he does have the hamstring injury. So he's not helping the team. But man, he's a tenacious defender. Um, to me, you already, you know, made a mistake by getting rid of him once. He's not old. He can play incredible on the ball defense. Um, that's just a guy that I would keep. And and then do you move uh, you know, your future number ones? And I would, you know, this is a tough one. Only for the right player. But the Warriors can move up to three first round draft choices between 2026 and 2031. They can't move them in consecutive years. Um, that's a major asset for Golden State to make them to move some of those picks. And I would do it um, to try to to try to, you know, get that one last title for Steph. All right. Who's out there that they could get that's going to help them? Siakam would be nice. There's no question. Um, he's He's got an expiring deal at thirty seven point nine, though. So I don't know how much you want to move to get him, because if you trade Kuminga and this guy walks at the end of the year, man, you've sure lost out on an awful lot of talent and a big opportunity to see Kuminga get better. So I would love to see the deal made without Kuminga. Um, supposedly the Warriors are a major candidate for Siakam. He's 6'8", he's 245, but he plays much bigger. He's got a 7'3 wingspan. He's got, you know, he's he's an all-NBA selection, two-time all-NBA selection. Um, he's a scorer. He's an athlete. To me, Siakam makes sense. DeJounte Murray um, I think uh, to me, if you have a deal cooking with Atlanta, that's also somebody else, Bogdan Bogdanovich or a Kong Wu or something like that. Or, um, you know, maybe that could make some sense. He's got four years and 114.2 million left. There's a lot of reports linking the Warriors to, uh, DeJounte Murray. So it hasn't worked out with Murray and Trey young in Atlanta. Maybe, you know, the Warriors, the Hawks definitely need to make a shakeup. Um, you know, I, I don't know if Murray, maybe in a big, in a bigger deal, maybe that makes sense. He doesn't help their need for size. Jared Allen Wood, he's the Cavs center. He's got two years and 40 million left. A lot of people feel like Jared Allen is definitely available. Um, you know, they've got Evan Mobley and they could easily move Jared Allen for, for us, maybe a wing player. Uh, maybe they're, maybe that. You know, maybe a Jared Allen deal with Wiggins makes some sense. Jeremy Grant is a name that's been mentioned. Lori Markinen is a real nice player with Utah. Um, you know, I'm not, a, I like Jonathan Isaac, but I don't think he's the answer. Clint Capella's name's been mentioned. I don't think he's the answer. John Collins is a big contract. I don't think that he's the answer. Vukovic, you know, is a pretty good offensive a big man. I uh, would give them a different dynamic as a shooter perimeter big. So would Jalen Smith from Indiana. He's a name that's been thrown out out there. So as far as who's out there and what to do, it's hard to say. But once again, to recap this thing, I would say I'm keeping Gary Payton. I would be open to moving Looney, Green, Clay, Paul, Moody, Wiggins. But I want to keep Trace Jackson Davis, Kuminga, Pajemski, and Steph. So that's where I'm at, and we'll see. 
I mean, um, you know Dunleavy's going to come away with something. This roster badly needs some form of a shakeup. And, you know, I don't know how far Golden State is away from a title, but you've got Steph Curry, who's the greatest shooter in the world. And if you could find the right combination, um, I think, you, you know, you owe it to at least try to figure out what is the right combination. And after watching them thus far, it's pretty clear that they don't currently have uh, the right combination in Golden State. All right. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks to Pagan and Pickle for being the title sponsor of the Krug Show. Thanks to uh, Mojo Fantasy for sponsoring this video as well. And thanks to all you guys for supporting the Krug Show on YouTube.